Hi everyone, Jared here, and we're going to be taking a look at Luminous Electronic Symphony for the PlayStation Vita. First thing I gotta tell you guys, you know the structure by now. The uh, Vita reviews are all done off, uh, off screen, which means the uh, footage that you see is not 100% uh, you know, perfect. You also know the way that a reviews work, so I'm going to start off with uh, some of the best features and then list off some of the pros and cons. Okay, so let's jump right on in. So the best feature about Electronic Symphony, hands down, is all the connectivity features. Now, I don't mean how it links to the PlayStation 3 or anything like that. I'm actually talking about how it links you to your friends. As the minute you boot the game up, you'll see your overall high score and then all your friends' high scores. You can easily check leaderboards the second you finish any of the modes to see how you stack up. And I really, really, really love this because for like the first time ever, you don't have to go through tons of different menus and different sections or whatever. It's boom, it's right there on the main menu to tell you how you're stacking up and that really makes this extremely addictive because you're gonna constantly want to be ahead of your friends. It's, it's like, you know, a high score chaser, but it works incredibly well. Now, a bunch of other stuff that works really well is the addictive gameplay. It's the same as always. As you can tell, the two-tone blocks fall from the top to the bottom, and your objective is to link as many light-colored blocks together before that clear line, the timeline, whatever you want to call it, hits the, uh, hits the blocks. It's simple and super addictive. Now, new to the series are some RPG elements. Yep, even Luminous has RPG elements. After you play pretty well any mode or do anything whatsoever, you gain experience, which eventually will cause you to level up, which unlocks new skins and avatars. Avatars are no longer just simple little pictures for you to uh, differentiate yourself amongst your friends. They actually grant you powers. Now, some of them do repeat the same powers, but whatever. Um, they could be things like uh, the line that you see that the timeline or the clear line will decrease in speed for one one go. Um, another might slow down the rate of blocks falling for just like one one or two seconds. And, or my personal favorite is the ability to make the next uh, falling block a chain block. That's awesome. Now just note that you can't use these uh, powers constantly. There's actually a, a little meter that's beside the avatar, well, it's more like a percentage, but whatever, that slowly fills over time, or you can tap it to give it a little boost, but it doesn't always, uh, always work. So the idea here is you have to be strategic with when you're going to use your avatar. Don't just use it the second that it's available, because it could mean the difference between life and death. I mentioned the chain blocks, but there's also a new shuffle block. Chain blocks work uh, very simply. Basically, the block falls, if you make a, a chain with it, any other block of the same color that happens to be touching it will disappear. So you can imagine, you can get some, you can net some really high scores with this. The shuffle block will switch around the colors of any of the blocks that it uh, touches. You might think that's a bad idea, but it actually becomes a lifesaver when you have all those individual blocks just scattered around all over the place that don't seem to uh, help you whatsoever. Another thing I really liked with uh, this game was a lot of variety. Not only do you have the standard marathon or mode, which is called voyage mode in this one, but Q Entertainment's also included an ad hoc only dual mode, time trials, and a master mode. And it's kind of neat because they even included this like global cube. And the more you play, the more points you put towards eliminating the cube. So it's really neat to see. Like the other day, uh, there was something like 7,000 players or 6,000 players, something like that that were online and everybody's going together to eliminate this one giant cube and you should see it looks like a board cube from Star Trek and by the time it was done it was like this tiny little thing but we still didn't uh, still didn't manage to destroy it because you only have 24 hours to do it and it requires probably like a million players or something alright I guess I gotta end off the uh, the good with the incredible audio visual experience I mean this is what the game is known for is its music and it features everyone from the Chemical Brothers to Wolfgang Gartner and just tons and tons and tons of excellent songs you can even make uh, your own custom playlist which is just awesome so you couple this with the incredible light show that sort of makes up the stages themselves and you have yourself an incredible looking and sounding game alright so the so-so 
Uh, puzzle mode is nowhere to be found. Uh, I really personally couldn't care less, but some people may have loved that from the other uh, the other versions. That's the one where you basically are showing a picture and you're trying to make the picture with the falling blocks. Um, uh, some might also have a problem with the fact that there's uh, no online multiplayer, but others won't really mind because there's ad hoc and puzzle games are usually better played um, face to face. Now there are a few things that make up the bad, and uh, there's only two actually, which one is the load times. They, they should be a little bit shorter than they are. They're not horrendous by any means. They're not like, uh, you know, 45 seconds. Although the initial boot time is a little bit too lengthy for what it should be. The good news is that you can put the game into its the uh, PlayStation Vita's solid state by just pressing the PlayStation uh, button. So then any other time you want to come back, you'll be instantly back in the game. But still, it's confusing because this is a cart-based game. Uh, and also, I know some of you guys are going to be really displeased with the price and trophy support. Uh, Electronic Symphony does feature trophies, but they feature the arcade trophies. In other words, as if this was a PlayStation Network only release. And yet, for some weird reason, it features a full retail price. So that's a little odd. Anyways, that's pretty well uh, all she wrote for Electronic Symphony. It's an incredible game that uh, anyone should go and check out the minute you can. It's absolutely fantastic, and I'm, I'm starting to think that, uh, like Mutant Blob's Attacks, it's one of the very best launch titles for the PlayStation Vita. Thanks for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed.